welcome to Accounting Marketing Doesn't Suck. Join host Hugh Duffy as he takes you behind the scenes with successful accountants, CPAs, and industry elites in conversations about growing a more profitable business. This podcast is meant to prove that accountant marketing truly does not suck and, in fact, can provide you with new skills to improve your effectiveness so you can learn how to develop a business that you want to run, not a business that's running you. Hello, and welcome to the Accounting Marketing Doesn't Suck podcast. I'm your host, Hugh Duffy, and on today's show, we'll be talking to Sarah Johnson Delbeck, president of Innovatus Consulting. Before I introduce Sarah, I'd like to share some insights with regard to her background. Sarah graduated from Purdue in 2003 and worked for an accounting firm in Chicago, John Walters, and company for five years. Then she was director of consulting at PDI Global, back when Alan Colton owned it. In 2007, she founded Innovatus Consulting, which is a growth consulting firm for public CPA firms. Sarah has been recognized by Accounting Today from 2013 to 2018 on the top 100 most influential persons within the accounting industry list. With that brief introduction, let me introduce to you Sarah Johnson Delbeck. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Hugh. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. Um, let's let's start off with, in your words, can you paint a picture for our listeners about Innovatus Consulting? Absolutely. Uh, Innovatus Consulting uh, exclusively works with the public accounting profession, and we help public accounting firms grow faster and in the right direction. Um, we work uh, when in the area that I would call probably middle market um, that most people would be most familiar with, which tends to be firms from maybe 5 million in revenue up to our largest firm is maybe 40 million in revenue um, to help them with marketing and business development. We will also tend to work upstream with the top 200 firms in the marketplace uh, around specialized uh, projects for them and doing training with them. And as you see it, what's the biggest opportunity growth opportunity that is for small CPA firms? You know, I, I see the biggest opportunity for small firms as really diversifying beyond compliance services, traditional tax and financial statement services to be offering um, more solutions. Most most of those firms I tend to find are working with small to medium sized businesses uh, who have a lot of needs that aren't being serviced by um, some of the firms at the upper end of the market. Things like outsourced accounting, um, even some cybersecurity services. Uh, Wealth management absolutely is an area that we've seen a lot of firms be extremely successful in, Um, but being able to provide more than just traditional compliance services, um, I see as the biggest opportunity for small CPA firms. That's perfect. And what marketing medium do CPA firms typically underestimate? Mm. Probably not the answer that you you would be expecting, but there's two areas. One you would be, which is social media. Um, Specifically, LinkedIn is a medium that we can see a lot of firms get great ROI and traction from in helping with their business development. And the other is just basic blocking and tackling and focusing very intentionally on your business development efforts, the organizations that you're involved with, and leveraging some of those. Marketing isn't about a shiny object or you know, something like that out there. Um, it, it's really about execution. And if you could narrow your focus and uh, focus exclusively on what you're trying to go after and actually be more narrow and less broad, um, those tend to be underestimated a lot. And it's usually the scariest place for small firms to to go to be successful with marketing. Hmm. And what are the hop- hottest niches to capitalize on from your perspective? That's a tough question to answer because it really depends on your market area and where you're at. What we usually advocate to firms is looking at where they are geographically and what what's thriving and what's not. And I'll give you a great example. Um, I work with firms all across the country. I work with a firm in West Virginia, and there are certain industries that are thriving out there, and there are certain industries that are not because of local economics. That's totally opposite than a firm that I'm working with on the West Coast uh, that has, you know, a different experience with some of those same industries like a construction or something else. So uh, what we usually recommend to firms is looking at their local markets and their economics to see what's there, but also looking at what what needs are not being served. So 
you know, the hottest one that you probably are hearing about right now, if you're comfortable getting into it, and if you're in certain states that supports it, is the marijuana industry, right? So if you're in Colorado or Oregon or Washington, where where marijuana is legalized, those can be great opportunities, but it's a very unique skill set. Um, and some firms are very nervous to get into those things. Um, but it can be very lucrative because there's not a lot of competition. So the most successful firms that I've seen, small firms, has developed unique niches um, based on what's in their marketplace, but also where there's a need that's not being met um, and something that they're looking at, like, you know, a solo practitioner that focuses on serving, um, you know, guys that are working on rigs um, in the oil and gas industry um, or something along those lines. Those are really unique areas that most people aren't playing in. So if you're going to develop a niche, you've got to look at both angles of that local economics and what works for your area, but also an area that's not maybe being uh, served as much. Do you have clients ca- cannibalizing or capitalizing on cannabis? I've got one firm that's working in that area, yes, um, and they're out in Washington. So it's it's definitely unique. Um, there's a lot of challenges. It's I kind of equated to working with the construction industry. It's similar. The Folks you're working with are really smart and they know what they do really well, but they need a lot of help. They're maybe not as organized, but um, it's it's definitely an interesting field to be in, um, especially with the regulations not completely aligned yet. Mm-hmm. And from an advertising perspective, what CPA firms have done a top-notch job, in your opinion? It's another tough question. We don't advocate a lot of advertising for smaller firms usually, but, you know, if you look at some of the larger firms, um, you know, ones that I tend to lean on the most when I look at what they're doing in the marketplace and how they're advertising on the West coast, I tend to look at Moss Adams and Armanino McKenna, and I can't point to a specific advertising campaign because I don't get some of those local publications, but they always do a really good job of, of knowing who they are and positioning themselves around that. On the East Coast, Witham does a great job of uniquely positioning themselves. And their success is being able to know exactly who they are and put that into the marketplace in a way that is representable. And the Southeast, Dixon Hughes Goodman, um, usually does a really good job of positioning. I don't know if anybody remembers their elephant campaign. It's now probably seven or eight years old. But that was a very memorable campaign um, that they ran for several years the biggest piece of advice I could give to firms is if you're going to do advertising, be consistent. Don't change your ad every single time. Don't change your message. It's got to be the same thing over and over again because that's what's going to get you traction. Totally agree. I could not agree more. Um, in the clients you work with, which ones are you most proud of in terms of what it's accomplished for them from a results standpoint? You know, a lot of our work center is not just about the execution of marketing, but helping firms build an infrastructure around growth. And so... The, the proudest moments for us are actually when we work ourselves out of a client, because that means that we have taught them how to build that infrastructure and be sustainable without us. And so as disappointing it is, is not to work with some of our firms, it's also very rewarding to work ourselves out of our position with the firm. And that's something that we work towards with all of our clients. So those are fun because we've seen the firm grow. We've seen the individuals grow. We've seen a number of firms that we've, we've watched Um, people transition from manager to partner and eventually managing partner in some of our firms. And those are really proud moments to be able to be alongside of their growth with all of that and to see the organization just thrive. Those are, those are always my proudest moments is to see those light bulbs go off and for the firm to gain the traction that they're looking to gain and see them be successful and eventually look at us and say, I don't think we need you anymore. Those are awesome moments. And how long are your engagements? Oh, gosh, it varies. Um, anywhere from a few years to we have some firms that are still with us, you know, that we've been working with for five or seven years mm-hmm. uh, just because they're not ready. Some of our firms are, um, you know, in the lower end of our middle market and might, you know, might take a little longer to get to the point where they're ready to bring on somebody full time and not ready to let go of us. Some of our firms just don't want to let go of us. So, um, but you know, most of our game niches are probably three to five years um, that we're working consistently with clients and trying to work ourselves out of a position with them. And as you look ahead, how do you see the industry changing going forward? Oh, what a great question. How do I see the industry changing a lot? You know, I feel like it's changed so much in the nearly 20 years that I've been in public accounting as a non-CPA. 
it's changed a lot. And I am so excited for the future. I don't know if the CPAs feel the same, but I'm excited to see what it brings. I just, I see so much opportunity that, you know, I chose to work with the CPA profession. I chose to build a niche here and specialize in this area of working with them. And they're such smart people and they have so much to offer. I think that are undervalued sometimes by their clients. And so I see the future looking a lot different. I'm excited about the future leaders that I see taking over. Um, even if it's difficult for some of the firms going through the process at hand, but I'm more excited about, I think the change that they're going to be able to affect in business by being able to bring in some of their insights and knowledge beyond just basic compliance. I see the future the next five years as the opportunity for firms to really make the profession what I think it was always intended to be, which is less historical and more forward looking. That's what firms talk about. It's what CPAs tell me they're passionate about doing, but they don't always get the opportunity to do it. So I think if our CPAs, you know, grab the bull by the horns and do it, I think they'll have the opportunity to make it exactly what they want it to be. And to me, that's it's exciting. I love working as, in this profession as a non-CPA and I love the opportunity to watch them, you know, make their businesses what they really want them to be. Hmm, that's a great answer. Tell us a little bit about your team um, and, and beyond you. Sure. So I am surrounded by an amazing team of people. Um, so our organization is a little different. We've got Innovatus Consulting, which is the consulting number of what we do, um, which also includes training and special projects. And then we've also got an association of accounting firms that we run. So I've got a team of five people um, between those two, and three of them are client service facing, um, either serving our association members um, or serving our clients. Um, we work together as a team. So each of our members is on one of our engagements and similar to a public accounting firm, I sit more in a partner role in, in doing certain projects and overseeing and guiding and developing our team. But um, I've got, you know, mostly millennials and one, uh, I'd probably say one Gen Xer that's working for me right now. Um, so it's an interesting mix of perspective and enthusiasm and excitement um, and being able to serve our clients. All of them, uh, almost all of them have public accounting experience where they've worked inside of a public accounting firm. Um, one of my team members started with me out of college and she's been working exclusively with public accounting firms since she started. So um, in, in more of an outsourcing role and capacity. That's neat. Sarah, I'd like to thank you for openly sharing your story and uh, I'd encourage our listeners, if you'd like to learn more about Sarah and her organization, Invadas, I'd encourage you to visit www.invadas.com, spelled I-N-O-V-A-U-T-U-S.com. Sarah, thank you very much. I enjoyed speaking with you. I appreciate you talking to our, uh, our podcast listeners. Great. Thanks so much, Hugh. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode, talking to Sarah Dobeck about diversifying services as a small firm and becoming a forward-thinking practice. If you liked this episode, make sure to let us know by leaving us a review. And don't forget to subscribe to the Accounting Marketing Doesn't Suck podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts.